Thank you very much. I'm, I'm very happy to be here. And um, my talk probably has only one thing in common with the rest of the talks here. We have a big data challenge. Uh, so how many of you uh, know anything about manufacturing? All oh, right, I, I was, OK, that's good. Um, I wasn't sure how many people would understand manufacturing. But all of you, I think, hopefully all of you will come away from this talk understanding there is a big data challenge associated with manufacturing where we are today. Uh, the other thing is from a website perspective, I have the Nimbus website. The, the other organization I'm going to reference in a lot of my talk is reference on Smart Manufacturing Leadership Coalition, and that's their website on the very bottom there. Uh, so if you want to find out a little bit more about Smart Manufacturing Leadership Coalition. So a lot of what I'm going to present is really information uh, that's been collected from this consortium of, of organizations. You can see there's a lot of practitioners or testbed uh, participants, anywhere from General Dynamics, General Electric, General Mills, uh, energy companies, um, pharmaceutical companies. Um, there's quite a, a range of those. Uh, there is also the platform providers, and that's where Nimbus fits in, providing the cloud platform, e-commerce, marketplace, um, open, uh, open source type platform for the data. Uh, and then you have universities, and then you have some standard organizations and some government agencies involved in this. Um, and this was formed because, as I'll, uh, I'll point out later, is that getting the data in the right place in the right form is a huge challenge, especially when it comes to manufacturing. So th this is the, the challenge for uh, manufacturing. And as I alluded to just before, is that um, in order to do smart manufacturing, um, all information is available when it's needed, where it's needed, and in the form it's most useful to drive optimal actions and responses. That's the biggest challenge today, is to get it in a form. And I will out outline why that's a big challenge. Once you have the data in a form and in, a, in the place where you can get actually get access to it, um, then you can start applying some of your techniques of manufacturing intelligence throughout the life cycle design, uh, planning, and production of the manufacturing process. And some of the techniques is you want to get, develop a comprehensive behavioral understanding of your data and through um, modeling and other analytics techniques. And what smart manufacturing is, Leadership Coalition is interested in is lower the barrier so that more companies can get involved in, get, in getting data in a form accessible so it can encourage development of entrepreneurs and a large community to get access to the data. Right now, most of the data is proprietary and very difficult to access to it. And most of the software is being developed by um, automation companies. We need to broaden that up into those folks that are doing the data analytics work, say, uh, Dun & Bradstreet could also apply some of the techniques here, for example. Uh, so that's why it's very important why we want to make the, the data more open. This is the, um, the challenge from the manufacturer's perspective on the left-hand side. Um, you probably heard the Internet of Things. It's, um, part of manufacturing is collecting the data at all different levels. And if you had a clean slate, it'd be very simple to get the data. Simpler, I should say, get the data in the right form. But on the right-hand side, uh, but the problem is most of the data today is in a proprietary form, um, collected by a, a large number of automation companies in all different forms and, and formats. And as you go up the pyramid, uh, currently most of the data is uh, proprietary and it's not useful in a collective sense. The goal is to get the data so that we'll be able to convert the, the data to information that can be useful so be able to apply in a smart manufacturing sense, converting knowledge to wisdom through a collective uh, approach. So this is a generic diagram of a manufacturing supply chain. Um, and what you would like to do is collect data across the entire supply chain. If you focus actually within just the plant there in the center there, there are lots of seams. There seems actually where the walls are, they're actually seams. And, if you and today, as you actually more seams are being generated as they're worried about security, and there's starting to be different zones in, of, of security, which also limits the access to the, 
the data. But let me give you an example. Let's take the case of uh, General Mills. Um, so if you want to, uh, when you go to eat a box of, of a cereal at breakfast, you would like to know uh, where it came from. Is it GMO? Is it organic? What's a pedigree if it's not? If it's not organic, you don't, maybe don't care about that. That's fine. But you want to know what the pedigree, what's the pro province all the data has been collected is through there. Uh, so you'll be able to track that from, from the field to the truck to the uh, storage bin uh, mills uh, to the train to the factory. And you, you want to know what the moisture content is because they would like to adjust the moisture content based upon uh, I mean, adjust their, their um, processing steps based upon the moisture content. And um, they would like to track that the entire way through. And, and a given train load, let's say, of, uh, of a wheat uh, will probably go into different packages. Maybe one promotional package, a smaller pack, a large package. And then so it gets out to your uh, table and that same um, train load of wheat may have ended up in all different aspects. So you want to be able to train, uh, track that. And because of the current regulatory uh, uh, reg uh, guidelines are coming down, you want to be able to maintain that for at least two years. So you want to have a complete pedigree of that. So how do you collect all that across that supply chain? So that's just an example for a food industry. Uh, so what is SMART? Um, everybody calls their system smart. Uh, that's a marketing term. Or intelligent, okay. Um, but in the sense that what we're defining, I'm defining here is uh, as a deeper understanding manufacturing process through modeling analysis. Um, it's really, from a practice perspective, it's using sensor based data driven manufacturing. What this means, you need to add uh, additional sensors strategically in the entire supply chain in different places uh, to, in order to do that. And that's not necessarily uh, comes free. And the, the real challenge again comes from execution is how do you, is the dynamic orchestration decision making of workflows between multiple environments. So and I'll show you later is the challenge of time series data aligning it up and putting it in the right context to be used, which is similar to other things that other talks have ta talked about. Here are examples of some of the test beds that are being considered. Um, example, you can just focus strictly on the machine line operation. That's very focused. That's not across supply chain. That's one form. Um, you can focus on high fidelity modeling, uh, like CFD type analysis. Um, you can focus more on, di on the dynamic decisions across the supply chain. Um, and then you also can look at uh, the enterprise level, including metrics uh, across supply chain. And then uh, for more things like automotive industry, uh, design and planning of your uh, components, your parts, your integration, um, in advance to manufacturing is also a very important aspect of it. To give you a little idea of examples now, um, Department of Energy is funding a, a project to implement smart manufacturing across these two uh, cases here. In the case of Praxair, uh, there is a methane reformer on the left-hand side with hundreds of tubes in there, uh, all operating at different efficiencies, and there's multiple plants across the U.S. and across the world, and you would like to be able to optimize those uh, furnaces, so, so to speak, uh, across there, because what happens in most cases is that these furnaces are configured once and left that way, and maybe once in a while manually tweaked. But you really would like to be able to uh, uh, be able to f fine tune that. And on, on the bottom, it's the whole idea of, of in the generation of making um, uh, those um, munitions. You would like to be able to uh, minimize the amount of energy and steps and amount of milling and grinding it takes in order to make those, those devices. And you want to track that end, entire way through the, the process line. So I'm going to hope with this diagram here, it sort of gives you the complexity. 
What I'm talking about is at the micro level at the plant, you're working at a second to minute level. Small control loops, automation control machines, um, and there's thousands of control loops at that point. And there's a lot of automation equipment out there doing that today. Um, but there's lots of seams from in the flow from one step to another. There are lots, lots of seams, and data is not necessarily being collected the way it should be across those seams. As you go up to the next layer, um, there are hundreds of control loops, but they are maybe in hours. Uh, so it has more to do with from, um, from the flow of the product through the assembly line, let's say. And then there's some more uh, uh, business level decisions that have to be made in, in, in days time frame. And so what you would like to do is be able to have a smart manufacturing environment that sits on top of that and is able to collect data at all levels. And the, the challenge is, it's not as simple as that, is that uh, this really represents only one plant, a rather sophisticated plant. Uh, there are actually, in the case of uh, other cases, there may be uh, plants that are owned by the company, or they may have purchased a plant from another company, they're all different equipment, or they may be using contract plants to do whatever they're doing. But they want to come out, out with a uniform product. How do you do that? How, how do you collect data? So the data collection at, in these different levels, you're interfacing to different tools, different automation companies. Uh, some data may be coming in at the, at the discrete level, with a single tag and a, and a, a numeric value. And, um, and that's often collected in a, a storian, which can store up like 500,000 type tags at a time. And then you now throw in the aspect, when I talk about the General Mills case, where you tie in the, in the supply chain. So in one case, is somebody may be handing you a fax with the moisture content of the, of the wheat. How do you get that into the system? And so there's all different levels of, of data and types of data that are coming in there. This is just an example of a lot of the levels of, of automation that's out there. Um, levels one and two are sort of at the micro level I talked about before. Uh, two and three is sort of like the, the meta level, and four is more or less the macro level. That's sort of the, the tools, but uh, they are sort of moving up into smartness manufacturer, not there. But the real um, challenge is, is that it's all stovepiped. A, a vendor cannot so, uh, integrate with other vendors. And that's, again, why the SMLC is doing what they're doing. So on the right-hand side here is these different domains, use cases for this. Uh, as I alluded to, this data is collected here. It may be sensor data, it may be calibration and maintenance data, it may be production models of what's expected. Um, this is collected, let's say, on different uh, uh, discrete time steps, anywhere from seconds on up. Um, you then must uh, map it and put it in, in the proper context. And only then can you start doing some analysis of that. And so. Currently today, there are systems that are doing this to a certain extent. And in the middle here, there's a huge um, um, storage uh, data organization model, which a lot of companies call Historian, which allows you to essentially pull the data for whatever you want. Uh, so it's a huge storage database, which you're able to specify, I want this type of data on, in this context, on, on this event, with this plant, based upon this event, that kind of thing, be able to pull that and get that data. Now, if you want to go across the supply chain, if you want to go across mobile plants uh, over months, years, what you like to do is be able to, be able to push the right appropriate data up into the cloud into a form that the real uh, data analytics can take place. And so that is uh, where a real innovation is gonna take place next in intelligence manufacturing. And so the first step in what we're doing here is making sure the data, defining how this data gets up here and developing an open platform up here 
so that researchers and companies can develop uh, apps that can analyze the data. And this will be a first in order to get the data in a form that everybody can get access to and work with. In some cases, the companies do not want to have the, the data in a cloud. Uh, they would prefer to have it within their own plant. In that case there, you sort of take the same uh, open infrastructure and they can host that within their own plant. In most cases, we see this as being a hybrid model where they may do some data which they're very sensitive about being processed locally. In other cases, it will be processed uh, up in a private community cloud. So from a processing workflow perspective, here is the diagram I showed you before. You can sort of think of this in a conceptual form is that you have a workflow up here or a data analytics type workflow in which you may be doing um, uh, data analysis and you may want to extract different uh, applications or apps from the marketplace, uh, incorporate those and do your analysis and automatically it integrates into the cloud platform. So in, in, in summary, what I'm really talking about is, is uh, a smart manufacturing uh, SMLC is really looking at a comprehensive approach to this. Uh, this is what the companies really want to get out of it. Uh, they want to be able to go across their supply chains in an agile, demand-driven manner, uh, be able to support regulatory uh, constraints, uh, guidelines, uh, be able to develop and uh, supply a higher quality product to their customers. Uh, they also want to be able to do it in a, in a sustainable manner, uh, especially reducing energy, which is what the DOE project is all about. And the other thing that's very important is they really want to be able to optimize across their plants and across the supply chain. That is currently right not now not happening. Right now, most of the companies are maybe fine-tuning within a portion of their uh, manufacturing line. Some companies that are more sophisticated or do across entire plant, but very few of them are gone across multiple plants uh, and across the supply chain. And um, there's been some studies done that there's a huge payoff in, in achieving this type of, of environment. Um, the other thing that sort of goes without uh, saying is that um, once you have this data in the cloud like that, there's a lot of things you can do with it. So I've already talked about the data can be used to explore these different dimensions here. But there's one other dimension that's very important, and that is security. Food safety, for example. You would like to be able to know if there's any unusual be uh, uh, events or behavior taking place where or not you're generating energy and the plant's going to blow up, or in the case of, of food, uh, you want to know of any uh, unusual event, just like when you do credit card processing, in other words. Um, when you have that data up there, the data can be used in a lot of different ways, analyzed in a lot of different ways, and, and security is another dimension which the data can actually be um, analyzed, especially from an event perspective. And it also helps predict, uh, for example, if one of your devices or equipment uh, may be nearing failure also. So it, it's interesting. Once you have the data, there's an awful lot of things you can do with it. And that's what is, is so exciting about this. 